Hello everybody and welcome back to another Blender 2.78 tutorial. This is Sorcerer Studios and prior to us beginning, I want to say I am very sorry for this late upload. So basically this is my second time recording this video and when I went to edit the first one, I realized that the audio did not record. So I apologize for that. For those of you who don't know, I try to upload three videos a week, Monday, Wednesday, and Fridays at 8 p.m. So, if you like that kind of stuff, please consider subscribing and hitting that like button. And once again, I really apologize. So in this video, we're going to make terrains. And first we're going to get rid of this cube, because we don't want that. And we are going to hit Shift A. And this unlocks a very powerful tool of landscape. Now landscape can be used for a lot of things. It can be used for people who like to model landscape in Blender. I wouldn't recommend this for people who want to generate landscape in Unity, just generate it in Unity itself. So here's our landscape, and if you like this, then that's good, but there's a bunch of parameters that we can use, and these parameters are here. Now don't scale it, don't, don't transform it, just leave it as it is, because if you do, these parameters will go away. So Mesh Update doesn't do very much, currently, but Sphere turns it into a sphere, so if you want like a, a boulder or something, then you could have that. Subdivisions, currently has 128 subdivisions, and if we were to uncheck smooth, you can see that this terrain is just a bunch of faces. Now, if we were to change this to, let's say 300, then that would make a lot more subdivisions. Let's bring this back to 128. Now, mesh size, we can, we can change this. This doesn't affect the height of it, it just basically stretches it along the X and Y axis. We'll keep it at 2, check smooth again. Type, this is where things get interesting. Planet noise is a type, and you can create a bunch of different types, and this really allows you to be really customizable with your terrain. So there's marble, there is distorted noise, Turbulence, interesting. FBM, also interesting. There's heteroterrain. Hybrid M fractal. Rigid M fractal. Now this is interesting. Uh, this can be used for some sand dunes if you smooth out the top a little bit. And then multi fractal. And I believe this is what we started out with. Basis blender. These things don't really, I'm not really a big fan of these, but if you do like them, for example, Cell Noise looks kind of sci-fi. Um, Veroni Crackle, hmm, very interesting. Certainly adds a lot of noise to that. So this basically rises the terrain with the Veroni F2, F1 is a little shorter. New Perlin and Perlin. There we go, but we're going to keep it at Blender. Random Seed basically allows you to completely randomize what your terrain looks like. So we could set the seed to 500 and it'll basically get us something completely different from our first seed. The X Offset basically allows us to move our terrain as if it were a blanket along the X axis. This is another way to get some random terrain. Same thing for the Y offset. Basically rotates, well not rotates, but it moves our terrain across the Y axis and it allows us to get something completely randomized. Noise size, let's change this to five and see what happens. So as you can see, pretty much smooths it out. Not much noise, but if we were to change it to 0.1, you can see that it gets very spiky. Lots of noise there. So let's keep it at one. Now the depth, what I observe from the depth is that the depth basically smooths it out or it makes it more rough. That's what I observe. So if we were to bring this to, let's say, 16, it doesn't do much. Let's try 25. Yeah, not much. It seems like 16 is the most we can go. So 8 doesn't do that much. It basically smooths it out when it's less than 8. And the dimension, 
It seems like it does something similar to noise size, except with the effect of making it more noisy or less noisy, it rises it or lowers it. So as you can see, this is more noise, but it is risen. So let's bring this back to what it was, which I believe is one. The lacunarity, what this seems to do is this seems to either compress the terrain or expand it. And when you expand it, it just creates something crazy like this, like a little tundra or something. And then if we bring it Okay, let's see what happens if we bring it all the way up. Very interesting. So it seems to converge to the center. So let's bring it back to, oop, not one, two. I think, pretty sure that it was at two. So for invert, basically when you check this, it makes all the high points the low points, and the low points the high points. So if you want that, then there that is. The height, it's kind of self-explanatory. Changes the height. Now as you can see, it cuts off at a certain point and we will discuss why later. I don't remember what our default was. It might have been 0.5. So the offset, it seems to raise it, basically seems to rise the entire thing. So if that's what you want, there's that. Now the plateau sets the max height. So if we were to set this to five, as you can see, we can adjust the height even taller now without it having to cut off at the end. So that's what plateau does. As you can see, when you set the plateau to 1, the height gets cut off. Let's bring this height down to 0.5. Sea level, basically this sets the minimum height. Let's keep this at 0. Okay, so fall off is just another way to customize it. Well, not customize it, but basically if you hit X, as you can see, the edge of the terrain rises. And this is good if you want to duplicate this. So, for example, Shift D, and then basically put it next to each other. Now, of course, we would have to rotate this. R, Z, 90. Nope, not 90. R, Z, 90 again, so that's 180. So that we can have something perfect like that or something similar to that. Okay, so as you can see, I just deselected this, or I duplicated it, so our parameters went away. So let's just make another terrain, or a landscape. Basically, this will bring us back to where we left off. So let's bring it to Y. That basically does the same thing, but on the Y axis. Type 2 doesn't seem to do anything on the edges. And I believe that's what we had before. Type 1, or actually maybe it was type 1. And then none basically allows it to go everywhere. Like that. Let's leave it at type 1. Now strata is very interesting. There's type 1, type 2, and type 3. And this is for randomization. Basically strata allows it to have different levels on the terrain. Kind of like what you would see in the Mesa. We can customize how many strata we have. Let's just look at type 2, type 3. So as you can see, they're slightly different. Let's keep it at type 1. Let's say 10. Let's see what 10 does. So as you can see, there's a lot of strata there. But if you want to leave it at 2, then there's some very well-defined shapes right there. Okay, so those are all the parameters. So now, let's say, let's say we want to make a mountain. So we're done with the parameters. So Let's say we want to make a green mountain with a rocky top. So we'll make a new material. Make it green like that. Let's make the specular intensity gr green. And let's go into orthographic view. Select the one on our numpad. And then, well first, let's make another material. We'll call this rock and this one we'll call grass. So now we're going to go into edit mode by pressing tab. We will select this icon which is the limit selection to visible. Basically this allows us to see through our object. So when we do box select like this, it'll basically select 
the vertices on the other side and that's what we want so with that selected we'll go to rock let's make this look more rocky the intensity down to zero and we are simply going to hit assign and there you have it that is our textured now obviously you can work on this a little bit to make it look better but this is a bit of a quick and dirty way of doing it so here is our mountain in blender thank you so much for watching i hope you enjoyed this content and i will see you in the next video bye